And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. So there are dimensions of God in your life that will never manifest until you begin to give. I know a lot of people who follow prophets. They receive impartation every day, but they never prophesy. Somebody else comes and gives to that prophet and begins to prophesy. The reason is because every dimension of God locked in your inside is God's kingdom living in your inside. When you begin to give, what you are doing is that you are unlocking yourself for the kingdom in you to be spread abroad. It is not about a ministry. It didn't say the ministry you give will be spread abroad. He said, my kingdom shall yet be spread abroad. So the first thing this thing does is that as you give, God begins to prosper on your inside. Dimensions that are locked in your inside begins to explode because your inability to give is actually because of self. You are self-oriented. You are self-centered. When you begin to give, you break the wall of self. And the moment the wall of self is broken, everything God puts in you that you are struggling to fasting and prayer that is not working begins to explode. And afterwards, the kingdom corporately now begins to explode. It is from within first before it is without. So the prophetic dimension may not be on your life, but it may be on somebody in that territory because you give the prophetic moves. So all of you now have become a system. So it is in that light that it is territorial. The apostolic dimension is on another man, it's not on you. But because you give, that man's voice is here. The kingdom is being spread abroad. So it is your giving that shifts the ministry abroad so it is first of all within and then it is without there are many global ministries today that have brought healing to millions they would never have been known except as they were partners and when it began it was like a joke and the reason is because god makes it small so that no matter how big you become you will trust him that's why god doesn't start us big he said the house of david grew stronger and stronger he had no system, he had no influence, God kept growing it. So even when David was a king, it was easy for David to tear his garment when God is grieved. Because God, David knew that it was by the finger of God that he wrote. This is why God begins with us small. But it doesn't mean it to be small. Now, this is what a lot of people don't know. They are looking for systems that are established. So they will give and then they will call them and then give them a national award and everybody is seeing them. That's nonsense. You need to understand where God is by time. God has shifted to a kingdom age. And God is raising fresh kingdom generals. Now, when you give, whether you give or not, it will happen. That's what we need to know. Whether we give or not, it will work. Because it is by the finger of God that we rise. But when we give, what we are doing is that we are becoming a part of a movement. And Jesus said that wherever this gospel is preached, her name will be mentioned as a memorial because she has registered her signature on that move of god so it is no longer the voice of a man it is now the spirit of a generation and you are part of that spirit and every inheritance eternal inheritance that is available for that generation you will have a, you will have a portion of that inheritance so when the sick is healed when souls are transformed when people come to the lord it is not Apostle Mike that is winning souls to the kingdom now. It is a tribe. It is an apostolic tribe that is winning souls to the kingdom. When the fornicator stops, when the killer stops, it is not Apostle Mike that is winning souls. If you enter into heaven, you'll be shocked. The same thing God will give to Mike, he will give to you. you, you in Philippians chapter 1, verse 17, verse 7 rather, Paul said, because of this, you have become a partaker of my grace so it was not it's not only paul the apostle that we receive the honors of his apostolic ministry there are many people that god will honor the same way he honored paul if they were consistently connected to what paul did because paul would not have been able to do it without them i may preach the message but the message will be heard because you gave money that bought the data this is a synergy you see that and this is why when we give the last thing we are looking for is gratitude. It's only babes that seek gratitude. And when we give, the last thing we are looking for is motivation. And then we are called, and they say, wow, thank you so much. I saw what you gave. The Lord increased you, and then you are motivated. No, this is our motivation. Our motivation is not in what we are told. This is our motivation. We understand the kingdom. 
is the higher purpose of giving first for establishment and secondly for empowerment to do more so when you give you give more and you give much more because you know you know that it's for your establishment is your insurance and it's your preservation in eternity the second purpose of giving is that is a statement of your love for God there it is difficult for God to evaluate your love if you don't give in fact the measure of your giving is the testimony of your love before God your the testimony of your love before the Lord is not your tears the testimony of your love before the Lord is not your crying it's not your coming to the Lord and telling God, I love you, I love you. Spirits are not mortars. He said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So you can meet a man and tell him, I love you. You can meet a lady and tell him, I love you. And he will be so pleased, not with a spirit. There are two things that make the spirit believe you love him. One is your obedience. Two is your giving. Let me read the scripture to you so I don't um, overemphasize. Luke chapter 12. I want you to write the scriptures down, look on them, meditate on them. The Lord will speak to you much more. I don't have the time to expound so much. Luke chapter 12. You know, um, okay, do I begin with Luke chapter 12? Okay, let's read 33, 34. Now, there was this rich young ruler that came to the Lord and um, wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus asked him of all the commandments. And he said he had kept it. That's in Mark 10. Okay, let me leave that story. Jesus was teaching about the kingdom. And he wanted to teach on the subject of love. Let me begin from this. And then he decided to show them one of the ways that god sees law in the heart of a man you know you would assume that god is all-knowing so if god looks at you he should be able to see if you love him but it's not like that one of the way god sees law in the heart of a man is by what that man does and in luke 33 in luke chapter 2 verse 33 and 34 jesus was telling them how to get treasure before the lord how to heap up treasure before the lord and I will, it will also show you the reason for that statement. In Matthew 6, 21, he said in verse 34, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Luke 12, 10. And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be purged. When you come back, you can become a prophet.